वेलकम एवरी वन वेलकम टू फिजिक्स बाई आर एन आई होप दैट योर गेट प्रिपरेशन इज ऑन द ट्रैक एंड गेट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इज कमिंग डोंट थिंक टू मच अबाउट द एग्जाम ओके सो लेट मी टेल यू वेरी स्ट्रेट दैट ऑल द एग्जाम्स हैव क्वालिफाइड नेवर आई वॉज सो कॉन्फिडेंट दैट माई सिलेबस इज डन एंड आई एम सो गुड इन दिस एंड आई विल बी क्वालिफाइन दिस एग्जाम नो दिस नेवर हैपन्स यू गो विथ सम अनसर्टेंटी बट यू हैव टू बी रिमेंबर वन थिंग whenever you are entering that exam hall you should be aware about that exam that what that exam is asking from you that what exactly is going to come in and like that exam every year a little bit there is a changes in an examination and that harms each and every student so that will not bring you down in the competition yes there could be some difficult questions but that will not decide your rank that will be difficult for each and every person right so in this lecture series what i am doing is i am i am taking nine sessions for nine days each day i am giving you one lecture and in that lecture i am telling you that what are the formulas that you should know for each subject okay if you are a physics by rn student you have all the notes with you go and revise those notes you have all the formulas written in those notes if you are not physics by rn student if you are doing coaching from any other institute or let's say you are self studying you have entire internet for you and you can just go and search out these formulas okay so right now in the last session i covered about the mathematical formulas that what are the most important formulas that you have to have to have with before going to the exam remember one thing this is not a time to attend the long lectures this is not a time to uh, go through each and everything this is a time to put on you if you are not studying 7 8 hours 9 hours every day if you are not spending more than 7 hours every day you cannot uh, expect a very good result because at this moment you have to concise yourself all the all the information which is in nine subjects you have to concise yourself and then you come up with the idea and then you go in an exam that okay i know the most important formulas from all the subjects and trust me most of the students do not know that okay so today i'm going to cover that what are the formulas that you need for classical mechanics and if you just go with these formulas i'm giving you very very concise formulas that okay only these formulas that you need not even the very long that okay you do this topic do this topic no in each and every topic i am also pinpointing the formulas that okay in this topic just do these formulas okay do these concepts and then you will be done okay so let me let's begin and uh, today's session for classical mechanics so now the, in the first thing in the classical mechanics the very first thing that comes is basic mechanics now basic mechanics is a very huge topic you can just keep on doing basic mechanics and it will never end however there are some topics in basic mechanics which are very very important and that you cannot miss out so let's see what are those topics number 1 what is moment of inertia what is the formula for moment of inertia if you have a discrete system how do you write the moment of inertia if you have a continuous system how do you write the moment of inertia and you have to remember the moment of inertia for sphere now there are two kind of sphere hollow and uh, solid you have to do for cylinder semi circular ring disc cone rod and sheet so for all these uh, bodies you need to remember your moment of inertia and i would expect if you can do it quickly how do you derive it if you can do the derivation very quickly that will be like very good okay because in an examination they will tweak the question little bit okay they will change it little bit okay and in many questions you might need to remember these values so please remember this way this will hardly take you 20 30 minutes to do that then parallel and perpendicular axis theorem in moment of inertia very important okay you might not see the direct question of it but indirectly this can come in any exam this is so basic in physics that you have to know this okay now next is center of mass that what is the formula for center of mass what is the center of mass for discrete bodies what is the center of mass for continuous bodies how do you write the formula very important and what is the center of mass for bodies like semi circular ring what is the center of mass for a rod what is the center of mass of a sheet all these basic basic formulas you can give on you can just go to the foundation physics course which i have taken and just read those notes if you will just read the notes of foundation physics you will find all the formulas that you need and foundation physics course is free for everyone so anyone can go and see that 
सो यू कैन गो टू एनी फिजिक्स बाय आर कोर्स एंड फर्स्ट सेशन इज कम्प्लीटली फ्री फर्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज फाउंडेशनल फिजिक्स इज कम्प्लीटली फ्री फॉर एवरी वन एंड आई हैव कवर्ड दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ इनशिया सेंटर ऑफ मास इन दैट ओके सो गो ऑन अवर वेबसाइट एंड यू विल फाइंड दैट मीन्स देन कम्स कोलिजन एंड इन इलास्टिक कोलिजन वट आर द कंडीशन फॉर इलास्टिक एंड इन इलास्टिक कोलिजन राइट कैनेटिक एनर्जी इज कंजर्व कैनेटिक एनर्जी इज नॉट कंजर्व मोमेंटम इज कंजर्व हाउ टू फाइंड इफ इफ द टू बॉडीज गो थ्रू इलास्टिक कोलिजन वट विल बी देर फाइनल विलॉसिटीज हाउ डू यू फाइंड दैट राइट यू डू अ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मोमेंटम यू डू अ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी सो दैट जस्ट अ वेरी बेसिक रिविजन इट विल हार्डली टेक यू टेन मिनट्स टू डू दिस ओके देन बेसिक फ्रिक्शन फॉर्मूला वट इज फ्रिक्शन फ्रिक्शन इज इक्वल टू न्यू टाइम्स नॉर्मल रिएक्शन न्यू एस सो डू यू रिमेंबर दिस फॉर्मूला If you do, you do not, then go through this basic friction formula. Again, it is available in free foundation physics. Then power formula. What is the formula for power in physics? It is F dot V, force into velocity. Right. So you should know that in which cases power is zero, in which cases power is not zero. What is the relation between power and kinetic energy? What is the relation between power and momentum? What is the relation between power and force? So the formulas for power are required. At least first two basic formulas. okay then work power energy theorem this is might be everyone is aware about that how to apply work power energy theorem right so work you have to conserve your energy you have to make sure that whatever work you are doing that will get converted into the energy right then comes angular momentum and torque formula this i have taken the special lectures i will uh, i will suggest each and every student to go through my rotational dynamics lecture it is available on youtube it is available on Uh, foundation physics course just go through these lectures i have discussed about angular momentum and torque in a very simple manner which is required for the gate students right it is not for like jai or jai advanced aspirants it is basically for you that what in in the sea of angular momentum or rotational motion what is exactly that you need from angular momentum and what is exactly that you need from torque so just go and watch that lecture okay that will actually if you don't can't watch the lecture don't watch the lecture just read the notes okay then comes rolling motion what is the condition of rolling motion torque equals to i alpha right what is the formula for angular acceleration and linear acceleration so rolling motion is one of the very basic you can call it as a topic of the physics and then in the last movement of inertia tensor i have taken the lecture for this also you can see this in the free capsule physics course of physics bar so how to find the moment of inertia tensor and uh, i have given the notes for this lecture for this very very important the question can be asked in the gate so if you just cover these formulas in basic mechanics you don't have to worry anything else about the basic mechanics everything will be covered right so whenever you are revising make sure one thing never never ask yourself that am i very good in this am i perfect in this topic have i done the enough question is this that is not the question to be asked while revising that is a question to be asked while covering syllabus when you are revising make sure that do i know the formula for this topic if i go in an exam if, and if the easiest question come from this will i be able to solve it so when you are revising revise for the easiest not revise for the hardest if you will revise for the easiest only then you will be able to tackle the hardest because otherwise you won't be able to cover the entire revision because you have one day for classical mechanics you have to revise entire classical mechanics in one day and in one day you can target easiest revise everything and think that the questions will be easiest and then trust your brain your brain will go in an exam and it will solve the problems that is the uh, strategy right now okay so that was about the basic mechanics next thing comes is center force and gravitation many students ignore this topic if you are ignoring this topic you are doing a big mistake especially for your gate examination you can ignore this topic for any other subject but not for gravitation or not for gate okay so what are the things to do in central forces and gravitation number one formula properties of central force what is central force right what decides the central force if some force is central what are the consequences of that what are the properties of that right so if you are a physics bar and student again i am telling you just go and read your notes everything is written there just revise those notes nothing else okay then finding the force law and equation of trajectory it's a one of the very famous question from iit jam but it is also can be asked in gate examination if i if i give you the force law 
then how to find the equation of trajectory right if you have if you have covered the central forces then you will know that but it is just hardly 5 to 10 minute of thing you can spend this time and just do it don't go without this in exam then this is very very important finding the frequency of the small oscillation from the potential if i give you any potential and i, I ask you that okay your your particle is experiencing this potential and if i disturb this particle slightly what will be the small oscillation what will be the frequency of that so there is a very simple formula for this and you have to do that then comes energy velocity yeah that is very important energy velocity and eccentricity condition for elliptical circular parabolical and hyperbolical path if your particle is revolving or if your particle is in some sort of central force what is the condition that it will be in hyperbolic path it will be in circular path it will be in a elliptical path it will be in parabolical path what is a what should be eccentricity what will be its velocity what will be its energy these conditions are very important so these conditions are given in the notes so please read that okay then comes next once you know these conditions then you have to see then you have to focus on the two very important path right one of them is a circular path and another is a elliptical path you can avoid hyperbolic not even avoid that is not even the formulas so for hyperbolic and parabolic you only need the conditions that in which conditions your path will be hyperbola or a parabola but for two very basic or very very fundamental motions one is circular and one is elliptical you need what is their angular momentum and what is their energy so if your body is in uh, circular path <clears throat> what will be the energy what will be its angular momentum same thing for elliptical orbit okay then ellipse parameters right conic section in ellipse you define three things a b and eccentricity right so you know that semi major axis semi minor axis and eccentricity what is the relations between them if i give you a and b can you tell me eccentricity if i just give you a and e can you tell me b so if i give you any of two can you give me third that is the most important okay distance of closest approach distance of farthest approach right so that is also very important how to write a and b in terms of distance of closest approach and distance of farthest approach so very important then one of the topic which every student leaves but it is covered in my notes very well virial theorem and its application right so what is a virial theorem how do you apply this theorem for harmonic oscillator how do you apply this theorem for the inverse square law force very important okay so go with the, yourself with the confidence of virial theorem so that was for the central forces now comes gravitation in gravitation you have to do kepler laws and aerial velocity there are three kepler law what are their statements what are they based on are they based on the conservation of angular momentum are they based on the conservation of energy what are the basis of those okay that's very important and the what is the formula for aerial velocity right what is the relation between aerial velocity and angular momentum so that is also very important question has been asked from this then one of the very famous formulas gravity if you go inside the earth gravity if you go outside the earth right what is the formula if you go inside the earth what will the, how do your gravity will change if you go above the surface of the earth how your gravity will change so very very important very important and then gravitational potential energy formula so if the earth is revolving around the sun then what is the gravitational potential energy between earth and the sun if two planets are revolving in in respect to each other what is their energy what is the energy of this system okay what if i give you four masses placed on the square what is the gravitational energy of this system right so how do you write the gravitational potential it is very similar to electrostatic potential okay so you have to have to have an idea that i have 2 hours and i have i will complete everything about center force and gravitation in 2 hours sit down and complete in 2 hours and then i will see how does how your rank does not come your rank will come this is not a something a joke this is analysis of many years okay if i am giving you the formula i am giving you with the full confidence that if you go with this formulas at least 20 25 marks you will improve in an exam but you have to sit down you have to sit down 
you have to open your internet you have to open your mind, the notes which was provided to you you have to write each and everything down and then you have to revise it two three times and one day for classical mechanics and you will be done with classical mechanics. keep unburdening your brain rather than thinking about each and everything okay right now is a time of concising your preparation that will give you the confidence in an exam that okay i am going with the concision concised information okay so that's for your central force and gravitation let's move to the third very very important topic we all know lagrangian and hamiltonian mechanics everyone knows that this is one of the most important topic of our syllabus right so but it's a very huge topic how to revise in just uh, let's say in two hours let's say sir i only have two hours how do i revise everything very simple first thing you open is degrees of freedom all previous year questions on the physics by rn course you know that each and every topic you have a previous year quiz topic wise not chapter not subject wise but topic wise pyq so just open the lagrangian pyqs which is of the gate and in that do all the questions which have been asked from degrees of freedom then write all the lagrangian questions then you should know that how to write the lagrangian do all the previous questions in which they are writing the lagrangian so second thing that you need to learn is how to write the lagrangian third thing how to write the euler lagrange equation you know that what is euler lagrange equation first of all revise the equation then how to write an e euler lagrange equation and when you write an euler lagrange equation you get a equations of motion how to get that do all the pyq and you will be done right then what is cyclic coordinates very simple what is cyclic coordinates then what is hamiltonian so write the hamiltonian if i give you any problem and i ask you that what will be hamiltonian if you know how to write lagrangian writing hamiltonian is the easiest thing right so we are done with degree of freedom we are done with lagrangian we are done with euler lagrange cyclic coordinates and writing the hamiltonian then comes hamiltonian equations what are the two hamiltonian equations in fact three one is for the time so what is the hamiltonian equations how to write the hamiltonian equations all the previous year question which has been asked on the hamiltonian equations okay then one of the topic which everyone miss that is finding the constant of motion if i give you hamiltonian or let's say i give you a Ham, uh, hamiltonian or lagrangian and i ask you what will be constant in this which quantity will be constant finding the constant of motion that is one of the very very important and look at this very carefully in the notes which was provided to you okay then very very important what is the conversion between hamiltonian and lagrangian if i give you hamiltonian and ask you to write lagrangian or vice versa can you do it you should be able to do it if you want to revise all this topic what you have to do is it is my personal suggestion do jc upadhyay all solved examples go open the book of jc upadhyay do all the solved examples and you will be done your revision will be very strong for gate exam okay two of the then next is two problems i'm telling you which is very important how to how to deal the spring system how to write its lagrangian how to write its hamiltonian how to deal with the pulley system how to write its lagrangian and hamiltonian and how to deal with inverse square law force problem how to write its lagrangian and how to write its hamiltonian these three things are very important and in the last one question every year they ask every year without missing that is canonical transformation you need 10 minutes if you are a physics by rn student just open the notes you will have everything that you need what is the formula what is the condition you just have to open the notes and note it down that's it that's all i am asking you to do just do that formula and condition for canonical transformation one question 100% coming in gate exam if you do not go without canonical transformation then i would say you are losing marks for yourself you are the person to blame okay you have to do this topic so this was about lagrangian and hamilton okay so this is one of the very important topic you can assign let's assign the time for each of the topic basic mechanics i would say spend at least 2 hours on this okay then comes our central forces i would say it's a very easy topic you can do it in 90 minutes sit down 90 minutes and do it then for this you need 2 hour so for now we have we are done with 5.5 hour let's see what to do next poiso bracket 30 minutes that's it
that's it the formula i gave you that's enough what are the five things to do in poison bracket what is the formula for poison bracket what is the condition for poison bracket what are the properties of poison bracket finding the constant of motion that we also covered in hamiltonian the same thing here and then writing the hamiltonian equation in terms of poison bracket it is so easy that you can do in 30 minutes okay so if you write the formula if you know the conditions if you know the properties and if you can write the constant of motion you can use the poison bracket information to find the constant of motion and then finding the hamiltonian equations in term of poison bracket 30 minutes you will be done with this topic and the last thing which in classical mechanics you have to do is relativity so we are already done with 6 hours now we have two more hours which we can spend 8 hours of study and you will be done with classical mechanics what to do in relativity what are the postulates of simple theory of relativity right what were the two postulates which einstein said that these are the postulates of special theory of relativity then very simple so how much time it will take you two minutes how much two minutes five minutes then lorentz and inverse lorentz transform equations how much time five minutes hardly five minutes you need that what are the formula for lorentz transformation what is the formula for inverse lorentz transformation then time dilation and length contraction formulas are easy but you have to do all the previous year questions otherwise there is no benefit then velocity transformation formulas are easy but you have to do all the previous equations then relation between energy and momentum you know that formula e equals to under root of p square c square plus m naught c square ka whole square that's it what is the relation between momentum and energy then what is mass energy equivalence e equals to mc square then comes three energies what is rest mass energy what is how your mass change how mass change m equals to m naught one minus under root of one minus v square by c square right so what is rest mass energy m naught c square what is the rest mass energy for proton what is the rest mass energy for electron you should remember those numbers what are the units different units of energy which are used in relativity chapter then what is the total energy then what is the kinetic energy these are the three formulas total energy is gamma m naught c square rest mass energy is m naught c square total energy is 1 minus gamma m naught c square right kinetic energy these three things then area and velocity transformation if your block is moving how will its volume change right if your plate is moving how will its area change right then what are the lorentz invariant quantities what are the quantities which do not change with the frame of reference for example speed of light for example charge right so what are the things that do not change with the medium i gave you the notes then what is space time interval right what is a space time interval between two events and what are the different kind of events based on that so that will be your last topic so total 8 hours of study these slides and whatever time is given to you take it as a challenge sit down and complete that okay go with this formula and you will remember me in exam that okay yeah actually the questions were coming from this okay so i hope you enjoyed this session more than enjoying this calm your calm you down the reason being because at this moment what you need actually is what you actually need is that someone is your entire syllabus is covered in some allotted time right you go with the revision it, it should not happen that from the last five months you are studying and in the end your syllabus is not concise you forgot the formulas forgetting the formulas is the worst thing that can happen question was tough you were not able to solve that happens with everyone that will not give you a uh, uh, any any sort of harm in a competition but if you forgot the formula that will be very disastrous okay so i hope that you are done with that 90 percent of the students are covering the syllabus but not revising it and I would say that just sit down and revise these formulas. Just revise these formulas. Okay. Give me in comment section if you need any specific formulas or you are not able to find any formula. Okay. That okay. This formula you in classical mechanics you are unable to find. I will provide it within today itself. Okay. In the last video, students asked that there is no notes for rotation of metrics. I gave the notes on that day itself. Okay. So please keep in mind your feedback will be very important for me. 
but your hard work is also that much important okay so i wish you all the best of luck in the next class i will come with the electromagnetism that what are the formulas that you need for electromagnetism okay so bye bye everyone i hope that your exam goes very very well